Okay, welcome to 10-3. Today we're going to be working with uh, proportion. Um, so, when you're working with proportion, you just take fractions and make them into their lowest terms. That's what this example is all about. So you can see quite clearly that 4 and 16 are both related by four they both can be divided by four so if you do that to the top and bottom you get one out of four this is called the lowest terms fraction the next one would be three and twelve they both divide by three one out of four so these proportions are the same four to sixteen three out of twelve they're both the same fraction as one out of four Maybe you're working with some harder ones like for let's see what's what maybe would be a hard one seven and fifty six maybe you're not sure what divides seven and fifty six uh in common, so what you can do is use the fraction button on a calculator. you go seven, hit this button, a little fraction will show up, and then hit fifty six that'll show up in your calculator. you hit the equals button and it will reduce it to lowest terms for you which in this case would be 1 out of 8 alright continuing on with fractions what happens when you have a fraction equal to another fraction like here where one of the parts is unknown you can see one of the pieces of the fraction is unknown Okay, so we will sort of skip what this book is offering for a solution. It's kind of messy and hard. We will offer a simpler solution. Whenever you have a fraction equal to another fraction, like in question two, where one of the parts is unknown, the x is unknown, you just need to work on this thing called cross multiply divide this will solve for the missing part every time and what we do is we draw a little picture on the equation to help us and it will look like this so I drew like a little fish symbol and what I ended up doing is timesing the two numbers that are across from each other, so 10 times 40, and then you always divide by the number across from x. So 10 times 40 divided by 50. Okay, and this will come out to 8. 8 is the missing piece. You can write it like this, x equals 8. Now I'll show you one where x is in the denominator. This is part B here. So again we make the fish symbol. So I always times the two numbers. Okay, So I'm going to times 16 and 18. The two numbers are actually cross each other. And then you divide the thing across from x. So I'll come up around, divide 12, and I'll get x. So 16 times 18 divided by 12 and that will equal x. Okay, I'm getting a value here of x equals 24. Alright, so what does this mean? What have we done? So the original proportion is 12 parts out of 16 parts. Now we're going to say that that's the same proportion, that's what the equals means, is 18 divided by 24. Okay, if you had 12 parts out of a total of 16, it's the same proportion as if you had 18 parts out of a total of 24. Alright, this is a very recognizable equation that you're going to see in this course a lot in 10-3, where you have to set up two ratios equal to each other and solve for the missing part. Okay, so you'll always know three out of the four pieces. So one, two, three pieces you'll know and you'll always need to solve for one piece, one missing piece. Okay? And it's done through cross multiplication division. 
Okay, continuing on here, I'm just going to skip to page 14. On page 14, we have definitions of what a ratio is. All a ratio is, is a comparison between two numbers measured in the same unit. Okay, so that's important. It has to be the same unit. At the bottom of the page, we see this word proportion, which is just a fractional statement of equality between two ratios, which you can see right there next to the definition of proportion. Moving on to page 15, they're going to give us an example, a very common life scenario. You're making food, there's a recipe, here's the ingredients, here's the, the, the proportions that they want you to create, and you end up with all these ratios at the bottom. And if you want your food to taste good, you better follow the recipe. So how is this going to affect us in 10-3? We're going to be get questions like number 3 here that we ought to be careful when we read. So it says that she's making ink. All right, she's wanting to make orange. So she'll mix she'll mix red with yellow at this ratio and she'll mix yellow to white on this ratio. Okay, let's read part A. How many milliliters of yellow ink do you need if she uses 500 milliliters of white ink? So we're using the ratio yellow to white. Yellow to white ratio is 3 to 1. So for every 3 yellow, we have to put in one white. Now we use the pieces of the information given to us in the question. She uses 500 milliliters of white. So the reason I put yellow and white on the left ratio is so that I can stay organized in the second ratio. I know that white goes on the bottom and yellow goes on the top. It says how many milliliters of yellow do you need? That's going to be the unknown. And then all you have to do is cross multiply divide and you will get your answer. So we have 3 times 500 divided by 1 which is 1500 milliliters. The next question asks you to do how many milliliters of red if you use 750 milliliters of yellow. The ratio of red to yellow is 2 to 3. So red is 2, yellow is 3. They gave us 750 yellow. Goes in the bottom, yellow is in the bottom, red is in the top. Okay, cross multiply on that. 750 times 2 dividing 3. Looks like 500 milliliters of red you would need. Okay, continuing on, let's go here to question 4. On a bicycle with more than one gear, the ratio between the number of teeth on the front gear and the number of teeth on the back gear determines how easy it is to pedal. So I'll just highlight that ratio front to back. Okay, so this is what we're working on, the ratio of front to back. So if the front gear is 30 and the back gear is 10, so 30 to 10, front to back. What is the ratio of front to back? Well, they're, they're not asking us to solve a proportion. They're just asking for the ratio. 30 to 10, those numbers both divide by 10. You get 3 to 1. So this is the ratio. It's 3 to 1. If I have one back gear, I need to put 3 for front gear. Okay? If you're not comfortable with numbers like that, all you have to do is go 30 fraction 
10 in your calculator using this button here and it will reduce it for you it'll go 3 fraction 1 which is just 3 3 to 1 3 to 1 okay some conveyor belts have pulleys two pulleys if one pulley has a diameter of 45 and the other has a diameter of 20 what is the ratio of the small to the large so they want this ratio small to large so that's the ratio they want okay the small number is 20 the big number is 45 put that in your calculator like 20 ABC button 45 and it will do it for you if you want to do it by hand you have to know that they both divide by 5 20 divided by 5 is 4, 45 divided by 5 is 9. So there's the ratio, 4 to 9. Okay, bank teller uses ratios when converting currencies. $1 Canadian equals approximately 113 Australian. What is the ratio of Canadian to Australian? Well, this is the ratio, 1 to 113. Uh, when we have decimals, though, we don't typically like decimals in our fractions. So what they'll ask you to do is to slide this decimal twice. Okay, so in order to do that, you have to times by 10, times by 10. Every decimal move is a divider at times by 10. Here, because the number we want the number to get bigger, we'll times by 10. Do that in the top, do that in the bottom you get 100 over 113. This is the ratio. If I put that in my calculator, 100 divided by 113, it's going to keep it at that. That is, in fact, the lowest terms ratio. So that's all you can do with that question. Question 7. What is the ratio of 250 milliliters of grape juice to one liter of water and it says there's a hint you need to convert both measurements to the same units it says right here that there are in one liter there's 1000 milliliters okay so if you look back in the notes it says that a ratio here is needing it needs to be in the same units Okay, same units, so that's why they're giving you that hint. So I'll just change this one liter into the thousand milliliters that it is. So you have 250 milliliters of the grape divided by a thousand milliliters of the water. And the ratio for, for grape to water, 250 divided by 100 is exactly one quarter. If you think about counting by 250s, 250, 500, 750, 1000, it takes four times to do that. Okay, so it is exactly one quarter. Your calculator will also tell you that if you put it in the fraction button. A mechanic mixes oil with gas to lubricate cylinders in a motorcycle engine. All this stuff doesn't really help me, so I'm just going to cross it out. He uses one part oil to 32 parts gas. What is the ratio of oil to gas? Well, it's exactly 1 to 32. Okay, so this guy knows that if he needs to make this solution, for every one part oil, he puts 32 gas. So if he has to put in two parts oil, he'll put in 64 gas, and so on. You just count like that. Alright, continuing on, here we have the ratio of flour to shortening. Flour to shortening, so it's like flour F to shortening S is 2 to 1. Okay, if the baker makes 30 cups of pie crust, how many cups of flour and shortening does he use? So this question is a little bit different because 
they give you the ratio of flour and the to shortening and these are the two parts that make up the whole which is what they're calling the pie crust so this is like a total or the whole which the parts make up okay so if it's two parts flour and one part shortening then what you need to do is add those up to get a total okay so what's two plus one that's your total so I'm going to do a flour to total ratio instead rather than flour to shortening okay so if there's two parts flour there will be three parts for the total because what they gave us is 30 cups of pie crust that's down here the pie crust is the total so then for x flour this is what I need to solve. So it looks like it's going to be 20. It's like if you think about how does 3 become 30, you need to times by 10. So you'd have to times that by 10, and x would be 20. So I was able to do that just by inspection, just by looking at it. If you're not sure how to do something like that, just cross multiply 30 times 20 divided by 3 and you'll get your answer. All right. I think these problems will be similar. A compound of two chemicals is mixed in the ratio of 3 to 10 if there are 45 liters of the compound. So again, we need to take those two parts and add them up. 3 plus 10. This ratio, 3 to 10, you have to add them up to get 13. That's the total. Because the 45 liters of the compound is a total. So how much of each chemical is in the mixture? Oh, this reminds me. Up above, it says how many cups of flour and shortening does he use? So if he uses 20 cups of flour, the other missing piece is 10, which has to add up to 30. So it's 20 cups of flour, 10 cups of shortening. So I forgot to solve that above. But uh, what it does, it tells us we need to find both parts. Okay, We have to find both parts. How much of each chemical is in the mixture? So again, let's use 3 to 10 in a clever way. So it's three parts of part one whatever the two chemicals are, chemical one. So you need three of those. And then the total would be 13. When I solve for that part one, I can figure out how many liters, because the 45 liters is a total. I'll have to keep that lined up with that. Then I can solve for x of the part one that's actually in there. This are, these are weird numbers, so I can't just figure it out like up, up above, so I'll have to cross multiply. 45 times 3, dividing 13. x equals 10.38. I'll just round it off there, 38 liters. Now to get the other missing part, I'll just subtract from the total. So 45, take away that last answer. 34.62 after rounding. So those are the two parts. Roughly 10 liters here, and 35 liters here. It adds up to the 45 in the t 3 to 10 ratio. Okay, the next one is about an automotive repair technician who paints... The instructions say to mix paint with thinner. So there's my ratio. I always just highlight the important stuff, and like this other stuff doesn't even matter. So paint is 5. Thinner is 3. 
if Cheryl needs 24 liters of the paint thinner mixture, that's a total, how much of each do you use? So again, I have to add those two up for eight. So paint being five, total being eight. Now I can use this 24 appropriately. The 24 is the total, so I got to put it with the total. So I have 24 liters. Then I can figure out how much paint I'll use. X paint. Also big numbers. I can't do this in my head, so cross multiply. Always timesing the two numbers that cross. Dividing the thing across X. So 5 times 24 divided by 8. X is 15. Okay, so I have 15 liters of the, fur of the paint part. Subtract from the total. And I'll get the other part, which is 9. So there's the other part. Here's my paint, 15. Here's the thinner, 9. 15 plus 9, 24. All right, the next section is talking about rate. Rate is a comparison between two numbers measured with different units. So this is different than a ratio because a ratio has to have the same units. The rate, you'll probably be most familiar with rate of speed, like 80 kilometers per hour. 80 kilometers per hour. Okay, so it's important that you understand that this slash means per. In other words, it's a division, okay? And you can see quite clearly that there's different units, okay? This is a rate. Very common rates you'll see in the grocery market for pricing for food. Okay, this is the price for 100 grams. So it's $1.69 per 100 grams of meat that you buy. And the other very common one is getting paid at your job if you're on a wage. $38 per every four hours that you work. All right, let's take a look at these questions. Write a rate statement that indicates that you earned $65 interest on your investment in the last three months. Okay, so it's important that you understand that the rate has to have units and that the slash just means divide. So 65 divided by 3, I got 21.666666. So whenever you have repeating decimal and you're dealing with money, you just round it to two decimals. So it's 2167 per month after division. Next one, write a rate statement that indicates how much you earn in an eight hour day if you are paid 925 for each hour that you work. So here's the rate. It's 925 per hour that you work. And if you work in an eight hour day, times that by 8 and you'll figure out how much you make per day. 9.25 times 8, $74 per day. And that's an 8 hour work day. The next one has to do with scale on a map. So it indicates that there would be 1 centimeter for every 2,500 kilometers in real distance. All right, moving along. Now it looks like we're going to have to use rate and cross multiplication. So let's see here what the salami question wants. It says, well, let's highlight our rate. So $1.59 for 100 grams. How much will you pay for 350 grams? Well, if it says how much will you pay, that's the unknown. 
and they are offering 350 grams as the amount. So all we have to do is cross multiply and you will solve for the missing part. So $1.59 times 350 dividing 100 I got five point five six five dollars now if you go to pay at the cash register this of course will round up to five point five seven this five will round it up if it's a four you just leave it if it's a five you round it up so it's five dollars and fifty seven cents at the cashier Number 16, as a janitor, Janine makes a cleaning solution by mixing 30 grams of powdered cleanser into 2 liters of water. So that's a rate. 30 grams of cleaner for every 2 liters of water. And I don't need to put in the powder or the cleanser or the powder or the water into my equation because I can tell the difference between, because I already have different units there, grams and liter. So it says, well, how much powder? That's going to be measured in grams, so x grams, for 5 liters. Cross multiply here. 5 times 30 divided by 2. And it's 75 grams. An office has decided to track how much paper it uses to reduce waste. At the end of each month, the secretary rec records the total number of sheets used and their weight. If paper weighs 4.9 kilograms for every 500 sheets. So all I did, sort of just like skim this crap here, and then highlight what's important, write down the units especially, keep me organized. Then it says, well, how much will 700 sheets weigh? So now I know 700 has to be down here to stay organized. This will be x kilograms. Cross multiplying. Just like that. Oh, actually, that was fairly ugly. Change to a pen. Cross multiply like this. So 700 times 4.9 dividing 500 it's 6.86 kilograms so the recommendation would be that you practice all the homework now so it's your turn to try remember homework is the sweat of learning good luck